about boundaries, amen, and we talked about the different boundaries last week, amen, and when pastor started it, I, I wasn't here, amen, I, I, I catch up, well, the most thing I get out of this was boundaries, amen, the word boundaries, what is a boundary, amen, we've been doing this, and, and we have questions, some of us don't, I was having trouble, you know, without this, without this book, you know, it's kind of difficult, but, you know, God's going to lead us and lead us through it, amen. He's going to lead us through it, amen. Even those, amen, that are, that are single or that are here, amen, God's going to speak to us, amen. It's boundaries. That's what it is, boundaries. That's what stuck out to me, the big words, boundaries, amen. And sometimes when we get married, we don't know how to set boundaries, amen. We don't know about boundaries. This is this is why it's good, amen. We, me as a man, I didn't have no boundaries, amen. I didn't care. Basically, there was no boundaries, amen. But when I met the Lord, there had to be boundaries, amen. Just like when you're flirting with sin, there's a boundary that the Lord sets, amen. He gives us a warning what's going to happen when we deal with sin. There's a boundary that he puts around us, and this is where we get boundaries from, because God puts boundaries around us, amen. But we have free will. We have free will, amen. Pastor can't be up here, and he's not going to, he can't tell you, don't, you can't drink. You can't, you can't smoke. Man, you can't lust. You can't steal. Like you, he, pastor cannot demand that from you. Anybody that's in the pulpit can't demand you that. Amen? It's a free choice that we have. Even God gives us a free choice. Amen? So it's all about boundaries. And if we don't have boundaries in our lives, and we don't know and learn how to set boundaries in our marriage, amen? It's going to trickle down, and it's, it's going to end up either we're going to end up separating, we're going to end up in divorce, amen? Like 60% of Christians, it's crazy the number, the, the percentage of the percentage of uh, divorces in Christianity in the church. It's crazy, it almost surpasses, amen, the world. And that's what's scary, amen? But a lot of times, you know, as Christians, we get, we get uh, intimate, you know, we're new Christians, we get intimate, we don't get discipled, we get excited, we don't get... We don't get discipled and being married and being married, what marriage is about. We get excited as we go into marriage and then we have to get to know each other. Amen. What is what we always say? First, first, it's all about looks, right? It's all about looks. Like, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. I gotta do whatever I gotta do to get it. Amen. When I was, I was, I was sick, but in my head to get my wife, I was like, man, I gotta put my game on. You know how you talk about, oh, man, I need to get some game right now. I got to plan out my plan. What am I going to do, amen? 
I almost missed my shot. So I'm in class with my wife, and man, we're in class, uh, DUI class, that's where we met in DUI class. She had a DUI, I had four DUIs, but God is so good, amen. That's how good God is, amen, that I got my CD out with four DUIs, amen. I put God for that. I put God for that. That's all God. I know some guy that couldn't get it because he had one DUI. I had four, and I was like, I praise God all the time. I give him glory because I was on him, amen. So we were in DUI class, amen, and she was about to be done, so I met her, her third, her third to her last class, and I didn't speak to her, I kind of thought I knew her, I was like, hey, do I know you? We look very familiar, hey, I know I know you, she's like, nah, I ain't from Brian, what are you talking, I'm from Denver, what are you talking about, she's like, she's going there, she grew up all over, I think she grew up on the north side, and then she went down south a little more. And she's like, I know you. She's like, nah, I ain't from Brian. Believe me, I ain't from you. <laughs> and also, I let it go. And then her last class, I was like, it was her last class. And I was like, you know how you say, oh, I gotta spit some game. So I, you know, I gotta do something to get her. I gotta do something. I have to step up to do something to get her attention. So I was like, you wanna go get some ice cream? You know, at first she said, yeah. I want ice cream and the girl next to her, she's like, I like ice cream. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I got, I got her and then I'll just take her just to, you know, as a wingman for her or whatever. So maybe I, you know, I'll take two. So she ended up leaving. She didn't even pay attention to me. She went out the classroom, the teacher this space and everything. She went, man, I'm like, what about my ice cream? She let me hang it. She took off. But, but check this out. I know that she had a DUI. So what does that mean? That means she has a breathalyzer in her car, right? She has a breathalyzer, so I got some time to go find her. I got some time to knock on the window. So I found her car, I found her car, she was blowing, and she looked at me. I know she looked at me, I'm like, she kind of, you know, it's like, kind of trying to ignore me, and then I'm like, what's up with the ice cream? What's going on? She's like, uh, uh. And we ended up, she said, I guess. She said, I guess. In her mind, she's probably like, man, this dude chased me down, knocking on my window. Maybe it might be worth it just to go get some ice cream. Maybe it might be worth it. But, you know, God God brings us together, amen, because that's the woman I needed in my life. Amen. God took the wrong woman that I thought was for me and took her away from me, and God gave me Abra, and then that's my wife. Amen. So I'm glad I say I'm glad she had a breathalyzer, amen. In a way, thank you for that DUI, God. I mean, he turned it what you know when you the enemy intended for bad, God it turned it good. It turned it into good. You see that? Got myself a wife, a wife. And that was good. So boundaries, amen. But that's how me and my wife met, amen. And we still got a lot to grow, amen. We've been married seven years, man. Seven years, amen. I got that right. Seven years, amen. So what is a boundary? In the simplest sense, amen. I'm gonna make it simple. In the simplest sense, a boundary is a property line. It's a property line. Bam, it's a property line, the beginning and the end of something. It's a property line. You cross this line, you, you can't come over here because this is the line I'm crossing, amen. And this is what He's trying to tell us that boundaries in our marriage, healthy boundaries in our marriage, amen, that we as a spouse, you are responsible. Not your spouse is not responsible for drawing her own boundaries. You can't draw her boundaries. She's responsible to draw her own boundaries, and you're responsible to draw your own boundaries because she can't read your thoughts. She might be like, she might be saying something else, but in your mind, you're saying something else. It's like, that's not how it went down. And she's telling the story, and that's not how it went down. So we got two different things. So a boundary, man. You can't set your own spouse's boundaries. You got to set your own boundaries, amen? And we're going to get through this. You know, God's going to help us get through this, amen? Because uh, he's going to show us, amen? So we're going to start on chapter two. And you guys may have the workbook, Amen. And we're going to go through it a little bit. We're going to answer one question out of it and kind of get feeling. That way we can go back and, and see what's going on. Amen. So applying the 10 laws of boundaries to marriage. There's boundaries. Amen. There's boundaries in marriage. So sometimes, you know, often questions asked is, how do I handle my husband's lack of intimacy? Amen. Think about that question. Have you ever had that question? How do I handle my husband's lack of intimacy in my life? 
is that if you ever thought of that or, or somebody's intimacy, maybe it's not, maybe your spouse, and this is a marital seminar, this is, we're talking about marriage, but maybe it's somebody else in your life, another relationship, amen, that you, that you, that you lack intimacy and that you would like intimacy from, amen. Me and my wife's marriage is not perfect, amen. I don't think there's no marriage that's perfect, amen. But I confess to my wife that as Jerry was up here, amen, and he was and he was speaking truth, amen. I was thinking of my dad. I was thinking of me and my dad's relationship. I was like, wow, that's so crazy, Lord. Why my dad? Because me and my dad spend more time together and we fight, me and my dad. He's hard-headed, amen. He's coming soon, Lord, it's this way. And I work with him, and it's his way, and, or it's not no way. Don't be quiet. And all these boundaries, I was like, Lord, I got to set boundaries with my dad. I got to set boundaries with, with my dad. And I'm like, it's crazy. It's supposed to be a marriage seminar. But I'm over here thinking about my dad. And, then, and maybe you're thinking about somebody else besides your spouse, amen. But this is a marriage a marriage, uh, a seminar, amen, and boundaries, amen. But sometimes it's not just your spouse, but there's other people that you got to set boundaries. Amen. This this whole I believe this whole marriage the boundaries and all this is it's set for relationships in general because there's some relationships that it's just so hard to click. Amen. Me and my dad, I love him so much and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to tell him to quit. Amen. Like you gotta go find another job, Dad. Amen. We can't work together no more. We fight too much. You know, I ain't trying to do all that, but how do I handle my husband's lack of intimacy? A man or in another relationship, how do I handle their intimacy? Sometimes we got questions like, what should I say to my wife when she overspends? And then maybe the wife is the one that overspends, amen? Maybe the husband is the one that overspends. How do I handle that? What should I say to my wife or my husband when they overspend? There's a lot of questions, amen, that we go through in life. What do we tell them, amen? We don't want to start a fight. We don't want to do this. Like Brother Jeremy said, sometimes... As a man, we want to just express what we're thinking, but that's not what's really happening because sometimes the women take it serious. They're like, oh, this is what you're thinking, and this is what you're saying, but we're just expressing ourselves. Or it's, it's our thoughts. It's not the way we feel towards you. In general, it's not the way we, 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 we feel towards you. It's just the thought that we have in the relationship, amen? And sometimes we can't share that with our wives, and it's hard. There's a boundary, amen? So I need to set a boundary with my wife and be like, I need to set this boundary that if I tell you things that are in my mind that bother me about you, you can't think that I don't like you. You can't think that I don't love you. You can't think that, no, it's a boundary. There's certain things that I would have to tell you, but you can't cross this boundary and hurt. Amen? But that's kind of hard when you're telling your spouse because women will get hurt the same as men. Men will get hurt too. You know, and you guys learn how to set a boundary, amen. So there's applying the 10 laws of boundaries to marriage, amen. You know, I know in your guys' book, the law number one, amen. It's law number one, the law of sowing and reaping. And there's a little thing on top, amen. And I wish I had that book too, so I could do it. Yeah. Right. Ah, it's gone. It's gone. They're all gone. Yeah, they're all now we're going to go over a little bit, man. We won't take too, too much. I can't go over all ten. But we're going to go over some, amen? Amen. Okay, we're going to get this. We're going to get started, amen. Boundaries. It's going to be healthy for us to set boundaries, amen. Even with our, our, our daughters, we got to set boundaries with our daughters. we got to set boundaries with our sons. we got to set boundaries, amen. That's what it's about. Life. Even God set a boundary, amen. Remember when God drew on the line? He drew a line in the sand, right? What do you think that was? That was a boundary. Amen? That was a boundary. He, went, he crossed the line and he drew it off the ground. A lot of people are like, man, I wonder what he put. Or what, what was he thinking? Exactly what he was thinking. What does the line mean? It means a, a boundary. They knew what a line meant. They knew how to draw a line. This line belongs to me. You can't cross this line and you can't cross that line. So it was a boundary. Amen? Boundary issues in marriage always require an understanding of the situation. Amen. Sometimes we can't just go into a fight without knowing the situation. Amen. Though we get practical suggestions throughout the book in the long run, learning principles helps more than learning techniques. Amen. We have therefore included this section on the laws of boundaries. Amen. Not as practical strategies, but as principles by which to structure your marriage, structure in marriage. Amen. These laws of boundaries are not about marriage that they should be. 
there are about marriage as it really is, amen? As it really is. Like the law of gravity, amen? You try to jump, it's going to take you back down. The laws and boundaries are always in force. Whether or not we are aware of them, these laws lay the foundation of how responsibility works in life. Amen. So I'm going to read law number one, the law of sowing and reaping, okay? I'm going to read that little headline, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and read out of the book. So simply put, this principle means that our actions have consequences. When we do loving, responsible things, people draw close to us. When we are unloving or irresponsible, people withdraw from us. Amen? So I'm going to read you a story. It says, Amy and Randall have been married for eight years. Wow, eight years. And they love each other. However, when he is angry or upset, Randall became become moody. Randall becomes moody and would withdraw from Amy and the kids, except for intentional outbursts of anger. When he's manufacturing, when his manufacturing business was struggling, he would sit silently through dinner. Once during the period, this period, the children were arguing at the dinner table. Out of the blue, Randall said, "Amy, can't you keep these children alive? I can't even have a moment of peace in my own home." And with that, he stormed out of the kitchen into his home office, turned on the computer, and stayed there until the kids went to bed. Amy was hurt and confused, but she had a pattern of handling Randall's moves. She would try to cheer him up by being positive, encouraging, and compliant. He has a hard job, she was thinking to herself. So she was thinking to herself, you know, she was trying to deal with his moves. He has a hard job, Amy would think. Nurturance is what he needs, and for the next four, few hours and sometimes days, she would center the family's existence around dad's moods. So they were walking on eggshells all around him all the time. No one was to complain and to be negative about any subject for fear of setting him off again. And Amy would constantly try to draw him out, affirm him, and make him happy. All her emotion, emotional energy went into helping Randall feel better. Amy was trying her best to solve the problem of her husband's moods. The spouse trying to fix, trying to try to solve the problem of her husband's moods, but they were just getting worse. His moods became blacker and more severe, and they lasted longer periods of time. What was worse, Randall seemed to be unaware of his moods. You're just overreacting. He would tell her, and sometimes he would even blame her for his moods. If you were more supportive, this wouldn't have happened. He would say. Amy felt terrible. What was going on? Amen. So she tried to fix his moods. She tried to make him feel better because of the way he felt. Amen. So I'm going to keep going. Bear with me. Playing and not playing and not paying. Check this out. Amy and Randall's struggle illustrates the importance of the first law of boundaries, the law of sowing and reaping. The law of sowing and reaping. Amen. That's the law number one, sowing and reaping. Simply put, this principle means that our actions have consequences. All of our actions have consequences. Amen. When we do love, loving, responsible things, people draw close to us. When we are unloving, irresponsible, people withdraw from us by being emotionally shutting down or avoiding us or eventually leaving the relationship and going somewhere else. In the marriage, Randall was sowing anger selfishness and withdrew withdrawal of love this hurt amy's feelings and disrupted the family yet randall was not paying any consequences for what he was sowing he could have his tantrum get over it and go about his business as if nothing ever happened amy however amy however had a problem she was bearing the entire burden of his moodiness she stopped what she was doing to take on the project of changing her moody husband into a happy man. So she thought it was her job to change him. Randall was playing and Amy was paying. Randall was playing and Amy was paying. And because of this, he was not changing his ways. Just like kids, we take our kids and, 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 and they play and we pay. They play and we pay. And because of this, he was not enough. He was not changing his ways. Randall had no incentive to change as Amy not, not he was dealing with his problem. Amy was dealing with his anger problem. Amy was trying to fix her husband's problem. Amen? So we're going to go to the question real quick. Amen? I'm going to put a pause. One of the questions it says, playing and not paying. Amen? Remember Randall and Amy? He was playing and she was paying. 
And because of this, he was not changing his ways. Randall Hanoi sent him to change because Amy, not he, was dealing with this problem. Question, when in your marriage have you played but not paid? Or what are you doing so now? Amen. Where in your relationship right now, you can answer if you want, have you played but not paid? Amen. And I'm going to give an example of how I played and I, and I wasn't paid for it. Amen. And, and God's dealing with me this, but uh, I, when people call, I tend to just get up and go. When people call me and they need help, I just tend to, to get up and go and I leave my wife. And I go, I don't tell her nothing, I tell her I'll be back, I gotta go home. And I leave. And, and by going through this chapter, I was I was understanding and God was showing me that I was playing, amen. That I would get up and I would go help somebody because they needed help, because that's what I do, right? I'm serving. God, I, I serve people, that's what I do. And in a way, but I was getting up and I was leaving. I was leaving my wife at home. I was always leaving her at home. Home. I gotta go, babe. I gotta go fix this. I gotta go do this for the Lord. I gotta go do this. And I was always leaving my wife at home by herself. All right, and we're talking about this, and I didn't know that she was paying. And man, in my head, I'm like, she's at home, she got it, the rent's paid, she's at home, she ain't got to worry about the lights getting paid off, she ain't got to worry about this and that, she's at home, she got it, you know, she has to take care of the house, I'm going to go take care of somebody, but but I was I was playing and she, and she was paying, you know what she was paying? She was paying resentment, why resentment of like, damn, my husband's not here. Like, should I resent him? And, and, and in my mind, my wife's like, man, he works hard just like Amy. He works hard, he provides. You know, he's a man of God. He needs to go help people. People need their help. And when I was jumping, like, hey, they need my help on there, right? And then I was playing, and she was paying the consequences. She was paying for what I was playing. And I would always leave, and I always leave her alone. I always leave her alone on a Saturday. I'm out. I'm not at home. I'm out doing something. And I'm not with my wife. But what she was paying is she was paying what? Loneliness? What else was she paying? Was she buying some lack of intimacy where she said, man, does my husband love me? Am I beautiful anymore? Does, does she don't love me? Does he not love me no more? Does he not think I'm beautiful? How come you don't want to spend time with me? How come you don't put me first? Just exactly right. And as a man, I'm playing. Why am I playing? I'm playing because I'm, I think I'm working. I'm paying the rent. I'm working. I'm paying the rent. And I'm thinking, I, I'm a man of God. Yes, I'm a man of God. But sometimes we do it too much. Sometimes we do it in vain to where I'm jumping because somebody needs help. And man, I'm not even thinking about it. That's how my head is wired. And my mom calls me, my dad, brother, and neighbor. Somebody says, I need help. I'm going to jump. And I'm going to go. But she's paying that. Resentfulness, loneliness, even even depression kicks in. We don't even think about it, but depression kicks in when our husband, when our wives need us as husbands and we're not there and we're playing and they're paying and they need us there emotionally. We don't understand this. That's why this book is good. Because guess what? Now she's stuck with that. And when I come home, she don't say nothing. And she holds it in, right? So now what? Now she's holding it in. She's not telling me, and I'm not even, I don't even know about it. I think I'm good. So the next weekend comes, guess what? I'm out. I'm out again. And then again, and again, and it builds up in her. And that's where women come, and that's where women come, and, and they don't even know it, but the doors open, amen, to depression. The doors are open to resentment, and the men are playing, and the women are paying. Amen. That's how deep it is. And through that first question, that's how it was. It's God, I have to set a boundary. And I told my wife, you have to set a boundary. And what's your boundary around me is the way I'm wired is you need to tell me that you need me. You need to tell me. I need to hear from you just like everybody else calls me. I need your help. I need this. I need this from you. And I told her, well, I need to hear that from you. I need to hear that you love me, that you need me. Because that's how I'm wired as a man. If you don't tell me that you need me, if you don't tell me that, hey, I need more time with you, I'm thinking everything's okay because we're different. Men and women are different. They're wired different. So women, you have to set a boundary too. You guys got to set a boundary around us. And this is what this book is talking about, is setting boundaries, amen? And the boundary number one, boundary number one was, was the law of sowing and reaping. So what, are, what am I sowing? I'm sowing discomfort. I'm sowing separation between me and my wife. I'm sowing division between me and my wife, and I don't even know it. 
and I'm reaping, and she's reaping it. She's reaping all division. She's reaping uh, depression. She's reaping you know, all that that comes with it. Amen. Especially if she's a woman, she goes through her cycles. And uh, on top of that, amen, she goes through her uh, uh, menstrual cycles. Is that how you call it? Okay, cool. I was just going to say, period, right? She goes through her periods and all that PMS and, and all that. And they go through all that on top of the feelings of, of a man thinking he's taking care of everything but not spending time. Amen. So that's a boundary that I want to share that me and my wife were talking about the other day. I told her the boundary is I need you to tell me that you need me. I need to hear it with my with my ears. And I need you to call me, babe. I need you Saturday, I need you to spend time with me. Because I feel lonely and I love you and I want to spend time with you because you're always working during the week. And it's and I, and I I don't hear that. So I'm thinking everything's okay. I'm thinking as a man, I'm like, I'm ready, I'm good, you know, I'm supplying. I mean, I'm being a husband, I'm being the best father that I can, but I'm playing, and she's paying for everything, amen, without me realizing it. So sometimes, you know, we, we have to set boundaries. So pain, uh, what was it, sowing and reaping, amen? So she was reaping all the bad benefits of me thinking I'm, a, I'm helping other people when I got to help my wife first, right? We are one. My first priority before I go help and be a servant and go help other people is my wife. That's my first priority. And it should be yours, amen? It's your wife. Your wife is the number one priority in, in your life. She comes number one. She's number one, amen? God made what? God made man and woman first, right? And it's a question. You guys, uh, I'm not trying to cause division or nothing, but it's a question between you guys. Okay, what's the order? What's the order? Wife and man, God, church. Have you guys heard the order like that? No? God, then your wife. God, then your wife. Your children. Your children. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead. We all got different opinions. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Well, God, church is included with God. Church is included. So, yeah, God, we, your spouse, not... your children, and then others. No, no, God's first. I know that. God's first, right? God's first. Okay, but what comes first? The church or your wife? Okay? The church or your wife? So you gotta love your wife as Christ loved the church. Exactly. But if your wife needs you at home, but you have a position at the church, what are you gonna choose? You're gonna choose and you're gonna stay home with your wife? Amen. 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 That, that, I'm just asking the question because we're here, we're being intimate. We're being here, it's about boundaries, marriage. Amen, I'm not trying to confuse anybody, and if you know the correct answer, please tell me, because I'm here to learn as well, amen? But that's what I've heard, amen? You know, it's your wife, right? God, God first, your wife, right? Amen. And then the church, because your wife and your kids come together, okay? But then it's the church, right? And, I, and if I'm wrong, and the pastor, you know, if we tell pastor and he corrects me, I would, I would love to know. I would love to know the correct answer. Amen. Amen. But Amen. life and marriage came first. Amen. Before even the church was founded, before anything was founded, God and man, Amen. One. Amen. Amen. And you know, in Revelation, Amen. Pastor straight with his wife. Amen. He needs his wife needs her husband, and the husband needs the wife. Amen. And this is a boundary that we don't set in marriages and reaping and sowing is that. Sometimes we spend more time with other people than our own life. Amen. When we're married, we're supposed to spend more time with each other than with other people. Amen. And, and something and we're going to learn through this. We're going to learn through this. Amen. We're going to get through this, and we're going to learn. So it's getting more. It's getting more interesting. It's getting on fire. Lord God, help me. Amen. Amen. Not playing. Playing and not paying, amen. So we gotta remember this: when we do loving, responsible things, people draw close to us. When we are unloving or irresponsible, people withdraw from us. Okay. So that was a question, of, of, and that was an example of me playing and my wife paying for what I was doing, amen. And, and it's something that we talked about, and we sat down there, Lord God, babe, you need to tell me that you need me, so. You know, women, you gotta set boundaries. This is what it's about, amen. Consequences gross spouses up, amen. This is our next section of questions in the book, amen. Consequences gross spouses up. 
Okay, God designed marriage to be a place not only of love, but of growth. One pathway to growth is learning that actions have consequences. Since marriage is such a close, long-term relationship, spouses deeply affect each other with their actions. With their actions. The old saying says, you always hurt the one you love. It's true. And this is why understanding and applying the law of sowing and reaping are so important, not only for the spouse who has taken on the problems of her partner, but also for the spouse who is shrinking responsibility. It's an act of love to allow our spouse to reap the effects of his selfishness or irresponsibility. Let me read that again. It is an act of love to allow our spouse to reap the effects of his selfishness or irresponsibility. So it's, it's okay when my wife says, no, you go through depression. Maybe you stay home by yourself. Maybe you feel like that. It's an act of love when they, 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 they when we feel the own effects and we reap the effects of our own selfishness and our own irresponsibilities. It's like conviction that hits us. How about you get a little bit of taste of when you leave me? How about you get a little bit of taste of when you, I'm here at home waiting for you and I want to cuddle with you, but you're not here. You don't want to cuddle with me. It's okay. That's an act of love. Amen. When we tell our spouse, when we tell our spouse that, amen. Unless, of course, we are acting out of revenge or a desire to see our spouse suffer. That's different. And what did that say? Jerry read it the other day. It said that, it said that, and then, Unpure hearts use boundaries to act out feelings such as revenge and anger. Watch out when you want to do something for revenge or out of anger. It says that's an unpure heart. Amen. So we got to do it with the right motives. We got to do it with the right motives to show our partner, hey, this is what I'm feeling. Hey, this is what I'm going through. That way they, can, with love, know what we're going through. Amen. Unless you guys love spending time with like with other people and not with each other. You know what I mean? Some relationships are like that, but boundaries are the key to obeying this law of sowing and reaping. When we set and keep limits with our spouse, we are saying to him, I may love you, but I'm not paying for your problems. Refusing to rescue your spouse, such as by refusing to cheer him up when he is pouting, sacrificing to pay off his credit card bill, calling in sick for him when he has been out partying and not before. Help keeps the problem with you. So instead of helping our partner with the problem, we're adding fire. We're adding wood to the fire. You know, we're helping them. We're not helping them. We're enabling him. Amen. And marriage is not about um, enabling him, enabling her. Marriage is about growing together. Consequences grow spouses up. That's why a lot of times I think we're afraid to mess up or we're afraid to do things, but that's where you grow. That's where growth comes, amen? amen? God will use somebody to bring truth to you, and it's like, wow, it brings growth, and, not, and it brings conviction, and it brings growth. Amen? So one of these questions, I'm going to read just one question out of every every little, uh, every little uh, dot. God designed marriage to be a place not only for of love, but of growth, amen? Winning your life. Your married life or earlier have consequences taught you a lesson and help you grow up. Amen. Okay, go ahead, go oh, sure. so, Yeah. So it's kind of on the same lines. You know, you're, you're the man, you're the provider. You, you feel a, a little bit of entitlement, especially if you're the one that's out there in the hot sun all day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with so much problems that you gotta come home and deal with all the other problems, but you're not thinking of your spouse's problems that she's dealing with on the daily as well. Especially if the spouse works just as hard as you do the same hours all day and then you expect to be able to come home and just sit on the couch and turn on the TV while you just sit there and let your, your wife who had just as hard as a day as you had sit there and cook the meals, do the laundry, clean the house. Where did she get her rest? You know what I mean? And this is something that I'm, it's, this book is bringing it to my attention because I've been reading it too. Yeah. And I think that's something that we all need to be able to, we gotta complement each other. We gotta balance each other out. If we're gonna, if we all need equal wins, if we can, it's like the 80 20 rule. You ever heard of that? It's like if the, the one spouse puts in 80% and the other spouse puts in 80%, the other 20 is you got the equal rest on, on, on the balance. Instead of people doing the 50-50, if you go above and beyond on both sides, you're always gonna offset each other and there's always gonna be that happy medium. 
So I'm, I'm coming to a point where I don't feel that sense of entitlement to where I want to to come home and knock my wife at your right though. If my wife don't ask me if she don't says she needs out, then sometimes I'm inclined to just go incline on the incline. You know what I'm <laughs> go incline on the incline. Or that's just the way it is. Hey, Especially if my body's aching and and I just need yes. to sit down and in my mind I try to I try to justify like my wife, she's like, yeah, she's been sitting there all day, she's like, I'm like, not. I need to just wind down for a minute, you know what I mean? Yeah. I need to chill, you know, I'm gonna hurt, I'm in pain. I need the muscle relax, I need some icy hot, I need something. You know what I'm saying? Man. <laughs> but it's not, you gotta, you gotta keep on going, you gotta keep on going together. Man, and I believe this is why this is good. And like, but the consequences though, like consequences. sometimes show, so tap it, hey, nah. I, I need to relax too. No, I'm gonna order a pizza or something. I'm not cooking. I just pull out the house. Come on, watch the show. Pile of laundry in there. Pull out, watch the show. You know what I'm saying? We're doing you know, this as, as, as marriage should be, but as it really is, amen. And that's the good. That's I, I love it. You know, amen. You know, fifty fifty. Everybody always says in the world, fifty fifty. 50-50, 50-50. I don't believe in 50-50, amen. I believe in 100 all the way on both parties, amen. 100 all the way. Oh, well, she ain't doing this, I ain't gonna do this. And she ain't doing it, he ain't doing this, I ain't doing this. And he ain't doing this. But that's why there's boundaries. And we don't, as marriages, we, nobody taught me to set boundaries around me, all right? I, I never set boundaries in my relationship. I've never had. This is new to me. I gotta set a boundary that when I'm doing too much, it's like, okay, let me give you an example, okay? Let me give you an example real quick. It's like having 10 buckets, right? Okay, you got ministry, you got your kids, you got your family, and then you got your work, all right? You got your personal life. You got this over here, and you got that over here. So you got 10 buckets lined up, right? You can't fill all nine buckets. You can't fill all 10 buckets. You cannot fill all of them 100% because you're going to wear yourself out. One bucket is going to be left out dry. Three buckets are going to be left out dry. You're going to put more water in this bucket than you do on this bucket. Amen? So think about it like this. You can't put all your effort. I can't put all my effort on helping people, helping my family, taking out their problems, and, and doing more things because I got to take, there's a boundary that I have to set. Okay, this bucket is filled 75%. This bucket is filled 75%. This bucket is filled 50%. This bucket is filled 30 Guess what? I have to set a boundary so I want to have to come and fill this up to 75%. Because I can't fill it up to 100%. I can't, not by myself. There's just too much going on. Amen? That's why God gives us strength and He gives us His mercy, He gives us strength and peace through all that. But you got to see it that way. We can't fill all buckets up with 100% all the way. Because you can't. You're either going to leave your wife neglected, like I was, and this is something that recently came up that I help people and I leave my wife. Amen? And I'll give you another example of, of her playing and, and then me playing, right? She's she's going through her uh, she's going through uh, some medical issues, and man, I, I believe God's uh, the healing's already there. It's happened. It's already there, amen. And she's going through it, but I've never sat down and said, "Hey, what's going on?" I've only heard her through the phone of the situations that she's been going through, right? So when I started, when I started, you know, asking her, and I was like, well, what is this? And I seen the paper on the table, I Googled it, and right away, I tried to fix the problem. Right away, I was like, baby, you can't eat this, you can't eat salt, you can't eat this. I almost made her cry. I almost made her cry because I didn't understand what she was going through. I was just trying to fix the problem. As a man, I tried to fix the problem, and I didn't know what she was going through. All she wanted me to do was just to sit there and be comfort and comfort her. Us men, we don't know how to just sit there and comfort her. There's something, a boundary that we have to set, that we have to comfort our wives. We have to comfort our spouse. And I'm telling her, well, you're going to have to not eat salt. You can't eat potatoes. You can't eat bacon. You can't eat ham. You can't eat this. You're going to go on a diet. Let's go fasting. And she looked at me like, what the heck's wrong with you? Somebody else had to tell me, hey, you need to check yourself. You need to be there with your wife. You need to see what's going on with her. She don't need you to tell her what to do. She just needs your company right now. Amen? That's all she needs is your company. She don't need you to tell her what to do, how to fix it, and then what to do, how to do it, for how long. She just wants you to just sit there, amen? And if you want to just sit there and just sit there, that's it. Just hug her. 
And that's what I'm learning through marriage. Eight, eight years of marriage, going to eight years of marriage, and then I'm, I'm learning that there. I'm learning what it is to love my wife. I'm learning what it is to set a boundary. I'm learning what it is to say no to people and say yes to my wife. No to people, yes to my wife. Yes to God all the time, amen? Sometimes over my wife, yes. But over people and my family, my wife first. My wife first, all the time, over my family. And my family were close. Well, we were closer when I was in the world. We were close, everything, we were close. But now it's my wife, my wife, my wife, my wife. Amen, so that's another question. We're gonna go next to the, what's that little dot called? There's a little, we're gonna go to the next bulletin, amen? We're gonna get through this. Anybody know what time it is? We got time. 8.05. 8.05, amen, we got time. Amen, we got time, amen. We got time. amen. amen. Consequences grow spouses up, amen? So there's consequences, amen? So one time I, I went in, I hung out with, and I'm sharing this because this is how I learned, okay? I'm sharing this because of the marriage, so, you know, consequences. One time I went to my uh, to my house, to my parents' house, right? And I chose family over my wife. I went in and I started drinking with them. As a Christian, this happened like four years ago, five years ago, I think. It's like five years ago, I bet. Well, that's all story. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> Consequences of, of me leaving my wife and deciding to go drink actually produced growth in me that I didn't know I had in me. But in all reality, I wish I didn't have to go through that just to grow. Amen. But it happens. Consequences grow spouses up. Amen. And we're still growing. We're still growing. Relational and functional reaping. Amen. We're gonna go to the next bulletin. It says the law of sowing and reaping is played out in two main areas of marriage, relationship and function. The relationship part of marriage involves the emotional tie between two people. And then when you guys first met, oh, he's fine. Oh, yeah, she's fine. Oh, when you guys first met, you know, we're weeping at each other. Who we at each other? Nobody? Nobody does that up. There you go. Stop. I can't do that. I did that to my wife playing around one time. Oh, man, she, was, she wanted to just let me have it. You know, it's like, man, I'm just like, perverts do that. Perverts do that. And I was, and I was thinking about, yeah, you're thinking about cheaters. Oh, you're thinking about Mexicans. Yeah, my side. You're thinking about my side. So I know. That's messed up. But the relational part of marriage remains involves the emotional tie between two people, each other, such as uh, deeply connected they are and how they feel about each other. Amen. When we when we first met, amen, we were so loved. Hey, amen. I, I couldn't stop texting you. And I was thinking that today, amen. And that's why I'm up here. That's why you're here. We're all together, amen. But that's why I was thinking. I was like, man, today it happened today because I was in the book and everything. I was like, man, I used to text my wife nonstop when I was at work. I, my boss had a time me to put my phone away because I would text her nonstop. Hey, what are you doing? Know, thinking about you, baby, and stuff. And, and that's when that's what it's talking about. We're so connected like that. And now that we're married, something happens. They got boundaries lost. We're no longer connected like that because we're married now. We know each other, right? I don't need to tell you I love you. I know you already. I don't need to text you good morning. You know I already know you're having a good morning. You know? That's how it is sometimes. Wow, you know what I mean? That's how it is. We get we get comfortable, and I think this is a set of boundaries to we want to go back. It's just like we're going to your first love. Amen. The Bible talks about going to your first love with God. So excited about being the church. So excited. Amen. I want to tell everybody, my whole family, about Jesus. 
It's the same thing of being in love. We have to re respark the fire, amen, of who, where we were at. So the, the relational part of marriage, amen, is, is the, it's that connection that we had, how we feel about each other when we first met, both positive, positively and negatively. In what way, if any, are you seeing the law of sowing and reaping being played out or being short-circuited in the relational part of your marriage? Amen? Do you see that? Do you see that? You know, and it's crazy. What, where, where are we getting at? You know? The Lord's bringing us back, just like he's bringing the church back to his first love. So we're doing this so that he can remind us that, man, we were lovebirds. We were like two little lovebirds, you know, just kissing each other, talking about each other, learning about each other. And, and, and what happens? Like you said, brother said, we get comfortable. You know what I mean? In, in my own experience, I believe that. It's, I believe that we start focusing on everything else. We start focusing on the kids. We start focusing on work. We start focusing on the house. We start focusing on the car. We start focusing on the pet. And we don't focus on each other anymore. Amen. We have to set a boundary to focus on each other and not on everything else that we have. If the in the relational aspect of marriage, sowing and reaping has to do with how our spouses affect and impact each other's heart. How do you impact your your, your wife's your spouse's heart? That's a question. How do you impact their, her heart? How do you impact his heart? Right now, as we speak, how do you think you impact this heart? Amen. Because we're in the present. We're now. We're not like back in the day. We're like right now. That's why we're growing. How do you impact each other's heart? That's a question. Think about it. If you can answer it, answer it. Amen. There's no wrong answer. There's no right answer. Maybe you don't have an answer for that. But how do you impact each other's heart? Amen. Yeah, what uh, uh, a true uh, an answer that you're doing right now that impacts his heart. What are you doing right now that is impacting your spouse's heart? Being a faithful man of God. Go deeper though. I don't understand. By coming to this marriage council to listen to be built up as a husband. I'm trying to why that's important because you know marriage has problems. Yeah, yeah, for sure. somebody a friend where they can connect so much and they can just talk and talk and talk and talk and like hey how's your day and they're like and I'm like wow I'm like why are we like that why can't I be like that why can't I talk to her like she talks to her friend you know there's something there right I know it's her friend I know if we talk different we're, we're different when we're around each other we're different but with my spouse I wish that she could just talk to me like that like she had a friend named Dan. He's, he's a lot older, okay? He's a lot older. She she worked with him. She was her friend, but when he came over, she, she could talk to him like crazy. And I never told her that until, until right now, because this book brought it up and the Lord brought it up, amen? But she could talk to him, just like all excited and talk to him, how you been? And keep on talking and forever. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, wow. And the Lord is showing me something. Like, what am I missing? How come I can't talk to my wife like that? How come me and my wife ain't like that? There's something missing. How come me and my wife can't talk like that forever and hours and be excited about our marriage and be excited of what's happening? You know what? The enemy comes in and, and he puts a burden on our marriage. 
marriages. Our marriages are not a burden. I want to remind the devil that our marriages are not a burden. They're from God, and God put us together. Amen? Amen. But I was like, man, Lord, how come I can't have that with my wife? What's happening? But they've had that bond for a long time because they work together. Right? And me and my wife, like, the Lord said, no, well, you got to send boundaries. It's you. How much time do you want to spend with her? How much do you want in your heart? Amen? Because I know there's things about my wife that I still don't know. Amen? And there's things that she don't know about me still. So how close are we really? Is it just the rational? Is it just the rational? It's the functional part. Amen? Because you know what the functional part is? The functional aspect is sowing and reaping is more easily identifiable. It's identifiable because tasks are more co concrete, right? For example, a husband may so overspending while his wife reaps the result by having to get a job or by scraping on food or other necessities to meet the family budget. You know, the man overspending, the wife has to work over budget. We can't be spending this much. We have a budget, we can't do that. And my wife's good about that. She tells me, hey, we can't do this. Or, my, or a wife may sow carelessness, housekeeping, while her husband reaps discomfort in his own home and embarrassment when company, company comes over. It goes both ways, functional, the dishes, throwing out the trash, cleaning, vacuuming, cleaning the house. That's the functional part, right? In either aspect, the problem is the same. The one who has the problem isn't facing the effects of the problem. And that's a lot of times in marriage. The one who has the problem isn't facing the effects of the problem. Our spouses, the other person is. And things don't change in a marriage until the spouse who is taking responsibility for a problem that is not hers or his decides to say or do something about it. Enough is enough. Like I know my wife wants to yell it out. You're not spending enough time with me. Stop going, stop putting everybody else first. That's what I heard in my ears. She didn't say it, but that's what I hear. Stop spending time with everybody else. Spend time with me. Show me that you love me. Show me that you want to spend time with me. And that's that's how God is too. That's why we come to church. God is saying, spend time with me. Spending time with your phone. Spending time with television. Spending time with this. Spending time with that. I need you to spend time with me, God says. I need you to spend time with me. And it's the same thing. I need you to spend time with me. This can range from motioning how her spouse's behavior hurts her feelings, or his, all the way to setting a limit on the behavior. We need to set boundaries and limits, amen, on our behaviors. We have to, amen. We have to. That was just number one. The pastor has to carry it, amen. Man, that was just number one. That's what God put in my heart, amen. And it was all Holy Spirit fell, man. I didn't. But, man, we need to set boundaries, amen, on our Boundaries, amen. Right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Can I share what the Holy Spirit is telling me? Boundaries on me, okay. Number one boundary, I gotta put my wife first. Number one boundary, I have to ask my wife if she needs anything or how she feels when I'm going to do something. Because a lot of times I tell her I'm gonna go do this, I don't ask her her opinion. I don't tell her how she feels. I don't tell her, hey, I'm not asking for permission. Okay, get that. We're men, right? We're like, oh, I'm not asking for permission. No, we're not asking for permission. We're asking on how she feels about the situation. How do you feel when I'm gonna go through this? How do you feel about me going to go through this? All right, and that's me. I don't know about anybody else, but that's my number two boundary. I need to ask my wife before I say yes to doing something on how she feels about it. Not asking it for permission, but asking it because the way she feels about it is more important. I need to know how she feels about it. Amen. And boundary number three, there's boundaries that I have to set. Amen. I have to set a boundary on myself on saying no to things, on saying no to people, on saying no to other people's problems, on saying no to other people's situations. It's, I love you, you know, I'm family. I'm talking about family, and now I'm talking about friends, and then I say, I gotta be like, I can't get rid of love, brother. Uh, you know what I mean? Because when it comes down to church and stuff, they don't want to get that. They don't want to get fed. They don't want to get fed. They don't want to come and hear the truth. They don't want to know how to change the relationship. They just want to quick fix for me because they know that God gave you wisdom. God, He knows that God gave you understanding. So they want to ask me, "Hey, how do I fix my problem? What should I do?" And it's like, no, I gotta say no. You know what I mean? I gotta say no, brother. I gotta save this for someone else. And knowing it's hard. 
Maybe you don't feel that way about me, but that's not, that's me right now. That's what the Lord is telling me. I need to say no to people. I need to say no to people and put my family first and my wife. Because my family, my wife comes first and then my kids. My pastor said, my wife comes first and then my kids. Amen. But I got to put them three. I got to put them first. Amen. God first, my wife. Amen. The church. And if I'm wrong, you know, please someone give me enlightenment of what's what I just said, amen. You know, and then the people in the church in the body, amen. But that's my boundaries. Um, it's not going to put some praise and worship. We're going to come and praise God because you know, He's the one that works in our relationship, amen. Without God, we can't set boundaries. We can set boundaries, but without God, we can't keep those boundaries, amen. We can set boundaries all day, but without God's strength and without Him affirming it through other people, our, our marriage is going to fail. But that boundary is only going to last a week. That boundary is only going to last two days. So I want to keep you, I want you to keep me accountable, amen? You asked me three weeks from now, hey, brother, what's up? Did you did you say no to people or are you staying true to what you said about your wife? Amen? <laughs> you ask my wife first and then come ask me because I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth, amen? Yeah, amen. Yeah. Yeah, she knows about it. She knows about cutting Gustavo's hair, amen? <laughs> Yeah. Say, hey, hey, I used to do things, listen to me, I used to do things without telling my wife, and I just made plans without including my wife. I made plans without including my wife, and that's wrong. That is wrong. That's a boundary that I have to set. Like I said, we're not asking for permission, but we're asking her, we're including her. We want her to feel like, hey, I'm including you in my plans because we are one together. I love you, and we are one together. So that's a boundary that I set. I can't just make plans and be like, hey, she has to cancel her plans before because I made plans. And I didn't ask her, hey, do you have plans? Do you plan on doing something? Do you want to do something? No, I made plans and I told her, hey, I'm going. I gotta go do this without even asking. And she was reaping. She was paying and she was reaping the benefits of loneliness. Like I said, depression, rejection, division in our own marriage. And I didn't see it that way. But that's what she was reading, and I didn't see it until God showed me. And God is showing me things that my wife's opinion matters. Amen. So, and I'm going to do things. When I'm going to go and do things, when I'm going to help people, when I make a decision, I have to include her. Like I said, don't get it. When my dad gets it wrong, he, he calls me Mandilon. In other words, that word people say sin or whatever. But it's not, it's you're including your wife. It's something that my dad don't understand because of the way he was raised. I thank God that God gave me a new heart and a new spirit. I thank God that he made me into the man that I am now because I could include my wife. And he's teaching me, I don't know this, I have to learn this. So if you're struggling, you have to learn the boundaries. You have to learn how to be a husband. You have to learn how to be a wife. And we have to learn about each other. And that's why we're here, amen. Sometimes it may seem boring to the flesh. That's why I said we gotta kill the flesh because the flesh is, it'll be boring to the flesh. But to the spirit, it's like, man, I need to get connected with my wife. I need, I'm missing something. Amen? So we're gonna come up here and, and, and you know, we're gonna praise God and, and we're gonna get out of here. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the boundaries, Lord God, that you have set, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, Lord, for what you what you've done, Father God, Lord. Oh, Lord God, Lord, help us, Lord God, to see, Lord God, how marriage was created to be, Father God, Lord. Help us to see, Father God, Lord, the love that you have for us, Lord God, and the love, Lord God, that we didn't have for you, Lord God, in our life, in the church, Lord God, in our brothers and sisters, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we thank you right now, Lord God. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. And we can come up, amen. Let's pray. I want to I pray for your marriages, amen. And I would like for you, for you guys to pray for me and my wife. Because a lot of times that's, that's what the enemy don't want is for us to pray for each other and lay hands on each other. Amen. We're going to pray for, for your marriages, amen. Oh, no. 
understanding, Lord God, to what marriage is, Father God.
present something as a problem that we need to fix, Lord God, but it's not our problem to fix, Lord God. Because you have the to control, Lord God. All it is is a distraction, Lord God, from our way, Lord God, to take us away from the things that matter the most, Lord God. And right now, Lord God, their marriage needs bonding, Lord God. Their marriage needs intimacy, Lord God. Their marriage needs direction, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would help my brother, Lord God.
So I pray, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for bounty, Lord God. I pray for abundance, Lord God. I pray for increase, Lord God. I pray, Lord God. Hallelujah for Thank you. 